Hey everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back to my channel. Um, in my previous video, I created a sort of Kurzgesagt style rotating planet animation that was pretty fun. So thanks to somebody's helpful comment, I took a look at another thing I wanted to try to recreate and that is some Kurzgesagt style fire. So I've seen them do it a couple of different ways in their videos, um, so I did it twice and tried to recreate both of those styles. Um, so let's take a look at how I created this in the Godot engine. All right, so once we have our drawing, we can begin importing the pieces of the drawing into Godot. So I have my flames, I have my ground, and I have my lights and particles, etc. Um, the first thing I'm gonna add is my ground here. I'm gonna do one on the left, and then another one on the right. There we go. So I'm gonna create a new node 2d actually I'll create two of them and I'll call the first one fire one and the second one fire two so I'll hide fire two for now and we'll just deal with fire one okay as a child of fire one my logs and I'm going to scale those down a bit you press s on your keyboard it will um, open up the scale option so that looks good and I think that's enough room for two okay so for the fire uh, this first version of the fire anyway I'm gonna create separate scenes for each piece of the flame so rather than put a bunch of these flames here and try to animate each one I'm gonna create a scene for each flame and then animate that scene so that when I instance that scene, it will already be animated. So I'm gonna get rid of that there and create a new tab, new 2D scene, and we'll call it flame one. There we go. Um, so as a child of flame one, I'll add a sprite and assign my flame one texture to that sprite. I'm also gonna add an animation player. To that animation player, I'm gonna create a new animation, just call it flame one. And I want the sort of flame to sort of bounce up and down, but stay rooted to the same spot. So that means I'm gonna animate the scale and the position. I'm gonna keyframe the start position, or the start scale rather. And then about half a second, we'll say scale it to 0 0.75 on the Y axis, keyframe that. And then I wanna make sure this is a repeating animation and that it starts at the beginning, right when the scene starts. So if we play that, okay. Looks kinda of like a dancing flame, although as I mentioned, I'm also gonna animate the position because I don't want the bottom of the flame to sort of pull up from the log. So set it back to zero, add another track, this time for position. Going to keyframe that first one and because I want the position to be 
right where the sprite starts. I'm going to drag in a guide so I can make sure that I align it correctly. So this is where I want the bottom of the sprite to be when it's sort of squashed on the y-axis. So I'm going to get my move tool and if you hold shift while you're moving whatever it is you're moving it'll move it along one axis be that x or y you can kind of see it snapping to the x and y i'm going to move that down right there and keyframe that see what that looks like there we go looks pretty good get rid of my guide here and there we go. So I'm going to apply the same concept to the second flame that I have. And then we'll add these flames to our log scene for fire number one. So under fire number one, I'm going to instance child scene for flame one. There it is. Just drag it down here. And I'm going to instance a child scene for flame two. And drag it down here as well. Um, so because these are instanced scenes, we can scale these up and down without affecting the original um, sort of scene. So I'm going to do that because this looks a little big. So I'm going to switch to my scale tool. All right, I think that's pretty good size. So basically, I'm just going to copy and paste them now. Um, some of them in front of the log, which is below the log sprite in the scene tree, and some of them behind the log, which is above the log. All right, so I got all my flames positioned in a way that I think looks okay. We can always go back and add more or do whatever we want, but let's play the scene and see what it looks like. Okay, so we can see that we have both of our kinds of flames animated, um, but you can kind of tell that it looks like it's all moving uniformly, at least the different flames are. So flame one is moving at the same speed and flame two is moving at the same speed, but I want to sort of make each one of these instances move or rather animate at a different time so it looks a bit more natural. So let's do that next. So in order to do that, basically we're gonna add a script to each one of our flame scenes and we're gonna randomize the sort of time that the animation starts. So I'm gonna get rid of that stuff in there and create a new random number generator. Uh, so you can call it whatever you like, just say random. And in our ready function, we'll put our script that will actually sort of start each of the animations at a different time. And then we'll say, let's say var, just call it r equals random dot rand f range, because we're looking for a range between zero and in this case for flame number one, one second. So because flame number one's animation lasts for one second, we want a random range between zero and one. Animation player dot seek, which basically starts it and you need a float, in which case will be R and then false. So false just means it doesn't update the animation while it's seeking the position R. Okay, so let's take a look and see what that looks like. All right, so you can kind of see the flame or flame number one is kind of moving at a different rate. Each instance of it is. Um, so we're going to do the exact same thing to flame number two. So I'm just going to copy and paste all this code and go to flame number two, add a script. And there we go. But the one thing I'm going to change is because for flame number two, I set the animation time to 1.5. I'm now going to set the range from 0 to 1.5. Awesome. So it's starting to look like fire. Um, you can obviously play around with how it looks, but I think that's kind of close to one of the versions of fire that I've seen on Kurzgesagt. Um, but anyway, I'm going to add one more thing to this uh, sort of style of fire, and then we'll be finished with this one. So the last thing I want to add to fire number one over here for now is a particle. So we'll add a particles 2D node and put it in front of everything. And then in that particles 2D, we'll set it up to 
use one of the textures that I drew. And that is flame three. It's that sort of smaller tic-tac looking little flame. So there it is. And I'm just gonna set it up so that it looks like it's coming off the top of the flame and then disappearing. All right, there we go. So I played around with the particles a little bit and uh, I like the way it looks. Basically, I'm setting an emission shape so that the particles appear within a certain shape on the flame. Um, the gravity is obviously reversed, so it's going upwards. Um, there's a little bit of scaling and a scale curve on those particles so that it gets smaller as they disappear. And then finally, there's color so that it disappears. Um, and that's it. So let's take a look at how to actually create the second flame which will be a little bit simpler because we're only going to use particles. All right, for the second flame, we can do it all within the, our main scene here. I don't need to create any sort of separate scenes for individual flames or anything like that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is for fire two, I'm going to drag in my logs and scale that down. And then in fire number two, I'm going to add a child node particles 2d and I'm probably going to do this more than once but I'll just show it to you one time because the principles are the same so for particles 2d I'm gonna set the texture to the fire sort of particle texture that I drew and it should show up over there there we go so now it's just a matter of playing around with the color the scale and the positioning and the velocity of the particles um, in order to get it to look like flames. So I'll play around with that and then show you my settings. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, over in my scene tree, you can see that I've renamed that particle node uh, layer one because what I'm gonna do is have three layers, sort of one in the middle, one in the very front and then one behind and I'm gonna use different colors for each of those layers um, but the way that I set up the particles is going to be very similar so let's take a look um, you want to make sure that you have uh, a process material set to particles if you don't actually get any particles showing up um, but in the emission shape I've set it to box so that it looks like it appears over a sort of wider space on the log and 70 on the X, 10 on the Y uh, for gravity, same as the other animation for the particles in that uh, version. It's negative 100. Um, initial velocity, I haven't changed that, uh, although I could, but the big things are scale and the scale curve and the text, the color, which I'll get to next. But for scale, I've set it to 0.75 initially, and then from 0.75, it scales all the way down to mere zero. Um, but I really wanted to give it that sort of big at the bottom look and small at the top look. Um, so down in color, that's where I'm giving it that sort of reddish color as the particles disappear. So you can set that gradient to whatever you want by adding a new gradient and then when you double click on any of the nodes in that gradient, you can change the color as well as the opacity. So there you go. So I'm just gonna play around with that a little bit more and add my other layers of particles to get the full effect that I'm looking for. All right, there we go. So I have one layer of particles behind the logs and one sort of main layer on top of the logs and then another layer of particles on top of that. Uh, sort of main layer of particles in front of the logs. But uh, there you go. So that's kind of two different versions of Kurzgesagt Fire. Let's take a look and see what that looks like in the full scene. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. We have one more thing to add, and that's the light. Um, so I'm gonna make it look like the fire is flickering on the logs and on the ground. So to add my lights, it's gonna be the same process for each fire. So I'll start with fire number one. Uh, and I'll add a child node that is light 2D and I'll make sure it's in front of the flames behind but behind the flames in the front. <laughs> it, hopefully that made sense. Anyway, I wanted to sit on top of the logs but be behind the flames that are on the logs. Um, so in my light 2D, I'm going to add my light texture. There we go. 
that's up there. So I'll just move it on to the logs and scale it down. There we go. So I can also change the color of the light um, in its properties. Go to color. I'll make it a bit more RNG. So it looks like actual light coming off the flame. And there we go. So one thing you can see is that the flames themselves are sort of being changed by that light and uh, kind of depends on the style you're going for. Um, I'll just leave it like that for now uh, just to see what it looks like and then I might change it after we set up the animation. But let's go ahead and set up the animation now. So under fire number one, I'm going to add a child node animation player. And in that animation player, I'm going to add a new animation. We'll just call it log light and add a track for that light 2D. And we're going to use energy because energy is kind of controls the intensity of that light. So I'm going to get the starting point. So I'm going to go over here and keyframe the energy at one. And then I kind of want it to bounce around a little bit. So I'll change a few of these values. We'll maybe make it go down to 7.5, keyframe that, make it go up to, let's say 1.25, keyframe that. And then it'll be repeating. So it'll be back to one. So let's see what that looks like. That's all right. I think we can make it a bit more jittery, but um, for now, I think that's fine. But the one thing I do want to change now that I'm seeing it is I want to make sure that the flames themselves are not being affected by this light. So if I go back to my scenes and click on the sprite and in material in the settings, I'll go to new canvas item material, click on that. And then I want to set the light mode to unshaded. So this means this sprite will not be affected by the light in that scene. And I'm going to do the same thing for flame number two. Go to material, new canvas item, light mode, unshaded. Save that. If we go back to our main scene, there we go. We can see that that light behind the flames is not sort of weirdly affecting the flames themselves. There we go. Kind of looks like a little light coming off the flame. Um, on fire number one. So I'm going to do the same thing for fire number two, and I'm going to do the same thing for the light that shines on the ground. All right, there we go. We have two different kinds of Kurzgesagt inspired fire. And just for fun, I threw some stars in the background in the uh, same way I threw them in the background in the previous video. But I uh, hope you liked that. That was kind of fun. It was a bit more tedious than the previous video, I think. In any case, I think it looks pretty good and hopefully this has inspired you to create something like that to include in your games. So thank you all for watching. Hope to see you in the next video and take care. Thanks.